Hello and welcome to Bio Lessons to Go. I'm Mr. Dove, and today we'll be exploring mutant DNA. It's not just comic book fiction. So what is a mutation? Well, each gene is essentially a sentence made up of the bases A's, T's, C's, and G's. And it's those bases that provide the instructions for making each protein in your body. Now, any random change in that sequence of bases and therefore, a change in the instructions for building those proteins is going to be considered a mutation. It would be tantamount to changing a letter in a sentence. That single change would change the sentence's meaning. A mutation then can change the instructions that are encoded in that gene. Now, there are some mutations that actually will have no effect at all while other mutations can have serious implications in how a protein functions, perhaps making it unable to function at all. So how can mutations occur? Well, there are several different ways that changes can crop up in our DNA. One way would be um, as an accident during DNA replication. So every time the cell divides, it has to copy that DNA without fail. And sometimes a uh, copy isn't quite perfect. We get about one mistake every billion bases. It would be like if you were asked to type up the entire Encyclopedia Britannica, all the information included in, in a, a set of encyclopedias, and you had to type it five times, and you only made one mistake. So it's a very small mistake, but that one mistake can have huge effects. It's fortunate then that we have repair mechanisms um, that prevent that mistake from continuing on. Another place what we might have errors in our DNA is what we're exposed to, um, be it a physical damage to our DNA or some kind of chemical agents um, called mutagens that can change our DNA. High energy radiation from ultraviolet light uh, radiation from both natural sources uh, as well as medical sources um, and then the chemicals that are found in cigarette smoke these are all mutagens they have the capacity for changing our DNA now there are several types of mutations and we're just going to look at a few to keep things simple the first type of mutation we're going to look at is a point mutation a point mutation is a change in one base of the gene sequence it's a change in a single base. This is equivalent to just changing one letter in a particular sentence. For example, if we had a sentence that said, the fat cat ate the wee rat, and we changed one of those letters, a C to an H, our sentence would now read, the fat hat ate the wee rat. A very different message than the one that we had before. The same thing happens when we change a single base um, in a point mutation. Um, if we, for example, changed a G in DNA to an A, that's going to alter the triplet code that's going to code for a particular amino acid. So instead of getting glycine, we get serine. Serine, being chemically different from glycine, can result in a different folding of the final protein, um, which is going to give us a very different protein, perhaps one that does not work. Now remember when we looked at the codon chart, there were a lot of built-in redundancies. There were multiple ways to code for the same amino acid. Well, this is kind of a, a cool protection from some mutations. Because we have that redundancy, sometimes a single base change doesn't change the final product, and that mutation doesn't really have an effect at all. These kinds of mutations are called silent mutations. So since there's that redundancy in that genetic code, there's 64 ways to code for just 20 amino acids, sometimes that one change has no effect. For example, if we changed uh, the letter A in GAA to a G, GAG, we're going to get the exact same amino acid, so we won't have any effect. And that's why it's called a, shh, a silent mutation, because it happened and we didn't even know it. Another kind of a mutation is called a frame shift mutation. Here, 
we're adding or deleting a base. Um, and so specifically, um, an insertion is a type of frame shift mutation, or a deletion is a type of frame shift mutation. This is the equivalent of adding an extra letter in a sentence or taking a, a letter away. If we go back to our original sentence, the fat cat ate the wee rat, and we delete the T in cat, the sentence would now read, the fat cat at here at at doesn't make any sense at all. The same thing would occur if we removed a letter from our DNA bases. Um, everything shifts over because we must read them in groups of three. Um, and so what that's going to do is it's going to change all of the associated amino acids. So frame shift mutations can be very deleterious. So what happens when we have a mutation? Well, it depends upon what kind of cell gets mutated. For example, if a body cell, or also known as a somatic cell, um, is changed, it's not going to be passed on to our offspring. Now, if that mutation uh, in those body cells continues to proliferate and divide, then those cells are going to be abnormal. And so those cells might be considered a tumor, a type of cancer, and depending upon the kind of mutation, um, would that be a benign cancer? Would that be a malignant cancer? Um, so a mutation in our body cells isn't going to be passed on, but it could still have negative effects in us. Um, so, for example, we have um, a little zebrafish here, and if his body tissues get mutated, and then we have mitosis, so its body cells are dividing, then we're going to see a proliferation of those mutant cells just in that one individual. Um, so if those were cancerous cells, then that population of cells would be a tumor. Now, if mutations happen in your reproductive cells, um, those could be passed on to your offspring. These are called germline mutations. So if we have a mutation that occur in our, our sex cells um, and then we reproduce, then we're going to be able to pass that mutation on to our offspring. That's one of the reasons when you go in to get x-rays that they put that lead apron over your abdomen and that's to protect your gonads so that you're not going to have any kind of mutations that could have been introduced uh, by those x-rays um, into your germline. So mutations have varied effects. Um, one of the things that mutations can do um, that have potential positives is that they can create brand new phenotypes. Um, for example, here we've got an albino bear. Um, and in some situations, that al albinism, having no pigment, could be beneficial, or this really cool characteristic of the curled cat. Um, some of the other mutations that we've talked about or that you've explored, and we think about the fruit flies and all the mutations that are in those particular fruit flies, each of those have a different phenotype. And depending upon the situation, um, those new changes could be beneficial in a population of organisms. And so that's one of the things that can drive natural selection. Um, some diseases are the result of mutation. Remember hemophilia, the sex-linked uh, recessive disorder that causes you to be unable to clot that we saw in the royal family? Well, that's a mutation um, in the factor 5, the clotting factor protein um, that can then be passed down from generation to generation. Um, cancer. Many cancers are the result of mutations in tumor suppressor genes and in proto-oncogenes. Um, and so that causes uh, cells that produce too many or too few of certain proteins and divide out of control. And so um, mutations can have a lot of negative effects, but they can also be positive. A mutation can be positive if it gives you a trait that helps you survive better in your environment. Um, for example, a mutation in color. Here we've got these um, different uh, moths. Uh, this is of the species Biston bistularia. Um, they have two different forms, a, a light form 
and a melonic form. And depending upon where they are, um, that could lead to uh, the ability to be camouflaged. Um, here we have a butterfly, which due to mutations in its, in its uh, proteins that produce its color, it actually looks like this other butterfly. Because it looks like its poisonous cousin, um, birds and other things aren't interested in eating him. And so it offers um, protection. And so this is called mimicry. So mimicry and camouflage are two um, things that can be the result of mutation. And those lead to better survival. So you might be wondering why we don't see a whole lot of mutations cropping up all the time in our cells since our cells divide so much and we're exposed to so many potential mutagens. Well, fortunately, our bodies, especially young, healthy bodies, um, have a lot of things that help protect us from these mutations. Um, for example, uh, the enzyme DNA polymerase. It has built-in proofreading mechanisms that as it's adding new nucleotide bases, if it detects the wrong base, it has the ability to excise or remove um, that wrong base before it gets too far along. Additionally, we have many different enzymes and other chemicals that are present that are going to help to repair DNA damage that might have been damaged from uh, the sunlight um, or uh, from other mutagens. Um, sometimes there uh, are mismatches in our DNA, and we've got other mechanisms that are kind of built in to protect us. So we have a remarkable system um, in our bodies that allows us to use this genetic information, our DNA, to provide for our physical traits, and then still be able to protect us from any changes that may take place. Unfortunately, as we age, or some people naturally are, or have problems with those repair mechanisms, um, they begin to fail, and so mutations can crop up, and that's where we see um, cancers and things occurring. So DNA, um, and the way that it works, is a very remarkable system. Um, and mutations are just another part of how our genetics works.